The purpose of this video is to give a step-by-step -step example of how the summary table feature in SMS can be used to compare results from a two-dimensional model with a one-dimensional model. 2D hydrodynamic models provide a flexible, accurate, and oftentimes convenient approach to modeling water flow. It is important to have options for comparing a model solutions, both with other models and with observed data. The summary table performs 1D calculations for specified cross-sections within SMS using a 2D model's solution datasets. Comparisons can then be made with other models, whether they be 1D or 2D models. Observation coverages can provide measurements and plots of solution datasets for specific points or profiles within the model domain and are useful for model calibration purposes. More information can be found with the observation tutorial available on Aquaveo's website. The summary table differs in that it is specifically designed to make calculations for cross-sections and provides this information in a convenient table format. We will import a model which has the solution datasets from a 100-year flood simulation loaded onto the mesh, run a summary table calculation, and then compare it with the results from an HEC RAS model for the same flow conditions. Note that on the 2D mesh, we have the SRH2D solution datasets, including depth, water surface elevation, velocity magnitude, etc. The summary table feature uses a 1D hydraulic centerline coverage and a 1D hydraulic cross-sections coverage to define the cross-sections for which it will make calculations. In this case, the cross-sections need to match what is used by the HEC RAS model for the comparisons to be valid. The geometry information from an HEC RAS model can be directly imported into SMS and converted into these coverage types, but since this is demonstrated in another video, we will instead show how this can be done manually. First, we create a new 1D hydraulic centerline coverage by right-clicking on Map Data and using the New Coverage command. The 1D hydraulic centerline coverage is found under the generic type. We will do the same to create a new 1D hydraulic cross-sections coverage. We now select the centerline coverage to make it active and, using the Create Feature Arc tool, we will draw out a centerline along the thalweg of the river channel. Centerlines are drawn from upstream to downstream. This direction ensures that the arcs and the cross-section coverage are stationed correctly. The station is measured as the distance along the centerline arc from the downstream end. The summary table will list cross-sections by their station, increasing from downstream to upstream. The centerline coverage can also use arcs to define banks, which allows the summary table to segment the cross-section into channel, left-over bank, and right-over bank portions. One method for drawing bank arcs is to use a background image. Another method is to use the elevation dataset on the mesh. Once drawn, the arcs then need to be defined as bank arcs in their attributes. The Attributes menu can be accessed from either the Feature Objects toolbar or by right-clicking on a selected arc. Now we will select the cross-section coverage to make it active, and then draw out a couple arcs along the centerline. We will try to keep the arcs perpendicular to the direction of flow in the model, and verify that they span the entire width of the flow. In the current version of SMS, there is a problem with the summary table computing averages based on the entire width of the cross-section arc, so drawing the section outside of the flood extents will affect the results. As a temporary solution, verify that the cross-section arcs are drawn within the areas of the model where depth is greater than zero. With our centerline and cross-sections defined by feature arcs, we can now access the summary table by right-clicking on the cross-section coverage in the Project Explorer and selecting the option from the drop-down menu. For this summary table operation, we will instead use previously prepared coverages whose feature arcs closely match the geometry of the HEC RAS model we wish to make comparisons to. Note that many of these cross-sections extend beyond the flood width of the model's solutions and would normally need some extra trimming to match the flood width. However, 
Due to the flood extents nearly matching the border of the mesh domain, the difference in summary table results are minimal enough to leave the cross-sections as they are defined in HEC RAS. In the centerline coverage, we can see the centerline following the thalweg of the channel and the bank arcs drawn using the elevation dataset on the mesh. We'll now open the summary table dialog and explain its options. The data source option is used to select the geometry on which we have our solution datasets. We will choose the mesh as our data source. Once we click OK, notice that the upper area of the dialog is populated with all scalar datasets that are loaded on the mesh. The cross-section options under data source are for defining what areas the calculations will be performed. The main channel only and overbanks and main channel options can only be used when you have loaded a cross-section database or when bank arcs are defined in the centerline coverage. Because we have bank arcs defined, we can use the overbanks and main channel option. The select defaults option will search for common dataset keywords and automatically turn on the average calculation. The keywords are water underscore elev, WSE, vel underscore mag, vmag, and frud. Calculation for the minimum and maximum values along the cross section is also available. We will use the last time step of the simulation since it is closest to a steady state solution. The advanced calculation section allows for calculation of flow or width of the wetted cross section. It is important to verify that the data sets for velocity, depth, water surface elevation, and elevation are correctly specified for this operation. The precision option determines the number of decimal places to which the results will be output. We can now click on Generate Table and see the resulting table with a row for each cross section along with its station. Note that the flow is very similar between cross sections and that velocities are higher on average in the channel than for the overbank segments. The contents of the summary table can be easily copied and pasted to a different platform using the copy to clipboard command. You can also choose the export command, which will let you save the table as a delimited text file. We now compare the results from the HEC RAS model with the 2D model side by side using Microsoft Excel. For convenience, we have prepared a table which shows the difference in the 2D summary tables results from the HEC RAS model. We can see that while the results are very similar for some cross sections, they are significantly different for others. This concludes the Using Summary Tables in SMS with SRH2D video. Visit the Federal Highway Administration's website or the SMS Wiki pages to learn more.